I had a girlfriend. Uh, uh, her name was Naomi. I don't mind saying her name because no one will... She'll never watch this, right? Hi, Naomi. If you're watching... We're gonna find Naomi. Every <laughs> resource Naomi. at our disposal will find you. Can everyone... Yeah. And get you justice. Watching this video right now, please contact every Naomi you know. No! She goes to Catholic camp, and when she gets there, something changed. I don't know what it was, but I'm a young Jewish lad, and she's a young Catholic gal. And things were going great. We were the two that didn't seem to work together, but it was but it was somehow working. And then she comes back from Catholic camp, and she just walks up to me, and she's like, a little cold, a little more cold than normal. And like, can you come talk to me after school? And so I talked to her after school, and I remember distinctly, I met her at some weird apartment complex. I will never go back there because it'll rehash all the memories. And we sat at some at some staircase in front of a pool with a bunch of children that were screaming too loud. And she looks at me and she says, this isn't going to work because you're Jewish. And I, <laughs> that's the first time I faced discrimination in my life. <laughs> Do you remember the first thing that came out of your mouth after she just dropped that on you? Um, you know, surprisingly, I don't think it hit me that hard because, uh, <clears throat> I didn't, I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really into her. Then why were you with them? Uh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think the little insecure middle school slash high school me would just hear that a girl was interested in me or... If I was just good at talking to whoever, of having a good conversation, and then she seemed like a little like into it, then I'd be like, oh my god, she's into me. That's not normal. That's not a normal thing that'll happen a lot. So I better just go with it. And I would go out with them. I just don't want you to get that kind of idea about us. I thought what we had was like, I, I, you, I thought we were just working together because you liked me as a person. This is purely carnal. Oh, fuck, man. What about you, Charles? Surely, surely you, surely you feel what I feel for you, right? If you feel like you want to take a credit card out under my name, then yes. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> so is that your first girlfriend? I would say that was my second real girlfriend, yeah. So first was worse. Worse? Worse I than mean... being dumped for your religion? She was one of those girls in school that would fucking, man like, she was a manipulator, and for some reason, for some reason, I just went with it, but she texted me one day and said, Hey, somebody told me that you like me. And, like, again, I never even thought about this girl, like, let alone talk about her. So obviously she was lying, but she just, that was her way in. I guess that's how she got to guys. Instead of telling them that she was interested, she would make them say they were interested, even though it they worked. weren't. And it worked! And she's a it. genius! I, yes! She's a genius! But it fucking did not work well. For you. She invited me. She invited me to her uh, to her Christian beach camp. So on the bus ride to the church camp, she broke up with me on the bus on a phone call. Actually through text. Oh no! <laughs> so, so I went to church camp with nobody that I knew! I wasn't even going to say that I was Jewish. I was just going to go to be with my girlfriend at the time who broke up with me so i went there and i started making friends with these people and i brought a ukulele with me and i was playing ukulele songs around the campfire and they're like do you know any christian songs and i was like no and they're like why not well i'm jewish and they were like oh and then for the rest of the camp i kept getting stopped by people that i didn't know randomly that heard me say that they would pull me off to the side while we're getting lunch or down at the beach and they'd say hey man i just wanted to let you know that i love you and i think you should let god into your life because he loves you and it was just like, Jesus Christ, they really, they just got one little, they found one little point of attack on me and they started digging and they were trying to get me. And then there were like circles where they were doing like a prayer circle before a meal. And the fucking guy that was in charge, the counselor would be like, uh, let us all pray for Drumsy and hope that he finds God tonight. And it's like, what are you doing here? That's so uncomfortable. I think every relationship I've had has been involved with Christianity in some way at some point. That's not normal. <laughs> That's not normal. That's I'm highly abnormal. Think. Especially mm. considering you're Jewish. <laughs> and Sounds like a movie. Who would play me? This movie would have been <laughs> produced in the 1920s, so it would be like Rory Calhoun. Uh huh. And it wouldn't have sound, it would just wow, be you're... like slides. Wow, today's generation will really get that reference. You don't know who Rory Calhoun is? I don't know. Sorry, I don't. I'm not uh, in touch with 1920s silent films. 
the hell are you? What are we talking to you for? The we're doing this for the Victorville Film Archive for California because that's where you're at. It's like uh, in the desert. I don't, I don't want to go there then. The desert sucks. It's hot as fuck, and then at night it's cold as fuck. We've had snow on the ground here since October. That's Canada though. Your money has holes in it. it doesn't have holes in it. Yeah, there is a there is a coin that has a hole in the center of it in Canada. No, that's uh, like Japan. I went to Prince Rupert Town. It was a port town in Canada. It's the only time I've ever been there. And they made me exchange my money for whole coins. <laughs> they were fucking with you. There's no coin in Canada. No, Someone gave you I like- look it up! <laughs> you got ripped off. I found it! It's a Canadian $8 silver coin. That's not what we use for money! What were you buying with silver coins? <laughs> I we're went to a like fucking Azeroth. supermarket! What? No! <laughs> There's no place in this country that accepts an $8 coin. <laughs> <laughs> With a hole in it. I hate both of you. I've never even heard of what? an $8 coin until today. <laughs> no. Minted well, out of well, pure I... silver. <laughs> Were you buying, like, mana potions and iron daggers with this? Like, what <laughs> What kind of well, store? How much money did you pay for the coin? Dude, the conversion rate was probably pretty bad, actually. I don't remember, though. <laughs> oh, no. no! I just remember I spent a very large amount of American money at a supermarket to buy, like, snacks, and it was no, it's the opposite. not a good conversion. No, you pay little American money for lots of Canadian money. Oh, no. I very legitimately believe that you were grifted. I would not doubt it. You just gave me a whole business plan. <laughs> There's gotta be more people like you. I had this girlfriend in middle school, but it was really like, I didn't know what a girlfriend was at the time, really. I didn't know how to treat a girlfriend, so we kind of just went out for a few months, and we hung out a lot, but we never did any boyfriend-girlfriend stuff. I think we, hold, we held hands, maybe. That was it. And then, you know, life goes on. And I talked to her every once in a while. I would send her some messages. And I think the last time I ever talked to her was a, like two years ago. I sent some messages to her. We were talking about our tastes in music and I still have the messages. And I looked at them because I saw a news report and it was like, this girl, Shauna, got baited by some jerk. Like, I guess she was either on a date with him and he took her to a hotel and he killed her, and he chopped her up, and he stuffed her into his suitcase, and then he threw it in a dumpster. And that was like my first experience with like, holy shit, somebody in my life that is not old and like already kind of on the cliffs of death. Somebody Shut like, up. don't read it, it's actually super depressing, because she had her whole life ahead of her. Kind of one of those like shock moments where you're just kind of sitting there like, staring off into the distance for a few minutes of like, holy shit, this was somebody I knew. Oh my god, the news is really tactless about it. They keep calling it the suitcase murder case. They fucking, they fucking came up with a, uh, a cheesy name for it and they kept using it. Sit down, this one's gonna be a wild one. So this one's a little, a little dicey. It gets a little slicey and dicey on this one. Um, and by that I mean, this is the girl I lost my virginity to. So this was during college, and my YouTube channel was kind of kicking off with some YouTube stuff. My, my YouTube was kind of kicking off with my Call of Duty videos. Uh, before I did VR chat, I, I did Call of Duty auto-tuning videos. Now, this girl was a fan of that. After we Xbox messaged for a little bit, and I still had no idea what she looked like. This she, is the uh, first time she started... anyone has lost their virginity from Xbox messaging. <laughs> Guinness Book of World Records, first man to lose virginity with Xbox Live. Not even Guinness, um, like, Nobel Prize winning essays <laughs> can be written about the, the implications of what you managed to pull. We're messaging on Xbox Live, we transfer it over to text, and without ever knowing what she looks like, I decide that I'm going on this trip to visit some people on the West Coast. I was traveling up north from San Diego up to Northern California, and then she was like, oh, you're going on a trip to Northern California? That's kind of close to Nevada where I live. And I was like, you're right, I could come swing by on the way home. And I did do that. Now, I had no plans for this. I had no plans, like, to, like, go make a move on her or anything. I was just gonna go hang out, honestly. Honest to God, I swear to God, cross my heart and hope to die. You see this? I'm making a cross. Keeping comes the theme back of to Christianity. Christianity every time. Keeping the theme. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even, like, bring a condom, because I didn't even know what a condom was for. I mean, I did, but I didn't... I don't think I ever bought one at that point. I get to her in Nevada, and as I see her for the first time, like, oh, she's, she's cute, and we're just hanging out, having a good time, and I find out when she takes me back to her house, she doesn't live there alone, Sermer. 
She lives there with somebody, her ex-boyfriend. So this ex-boyfriend kind of just peeks out of his room and like, Sup, dude? And I say hi to him, I'm friendly. I feel like I got along. But apparently, as the night is going on and we're having a few drinks, this boyfriend was apparently getting drunk by himself in his room. The ex-boyfriend was. And he comes out and fucking calls her into his room for a second. And I just start hearing yelling. Like fucking mad yelling. This is like 40-year married couple about to get divorced yelling. It was bad. I'm getting a little awkward. I'm feeling like maybe I shouldn't be there, but I really, it's nighttime. I'm not going to start driving back home, so I'm just sitting there on the couch. She comes out and she says, Yeah, my ex-boyfriend doesn't like that you're here, and he's kicking me out of the house. So, like, this house that she was stuck in with her ex-boyfriend, because they moved in there together, and they signed a lease together, and then they broke up, so she was stuck in this house with him. She fucking gets kicked out, and I can't help but feel like it's my fault, but she invited me there, so it's her fault, okay? So I take us to a motel, a very seedy motel. I literally think it was called like Motel 66. Cockroaches and moths all over the place. And we hop in and I pay for a room, which was like $30 because this was the middle of nowhere. We go in and we continue drinking and she just kind of, you know, hops on the bed and we do things. So that's it. Without getting into that part. It's too late. We want to know everything. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be super honest with you, man. All right. Uh, I don't think I did a good job because it was my first time and I think nobody does a good job on their first time. If you do a good job on your first time, you're being lied to. If somebody tells you, that was great. Um, I want you to fucking pull out your lie detector, strap it to their arm, and it's gonna go beep, 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 all over the place, okay? They're fucking lying to you. I did what I would describe as the starfish method, where you put two arms out and two legs out and you're just kind of lying there and nothing's really happening. Um, so, wait, that's what I you, did. You, you, <laughs> wait, wait, I have, I have a few questions. I have a few yeah, questions. Yeah, what's your question? Wait, don't you mean she was just lying there? <laughs> what do you, mean? you know there's multiple positions, right? Well, the no, guy can the, be on the bottom, but too. But the starfish thing is referred to, like, that's a term for women when they phone it in. That's not something... Wait, yeah. is that really? <laughs> yeah. I don't think the man can do that. Wait, do you, I don't want to explain this! Fuck that! We're <laughs> no, done talking about no, what no, actually you're happened. You're too deep. I you've don't want to talk questions about this! this. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> you must continue. Anyways, after you can't sex... Dodge this. No, After you can't sex, pull a Jeff Sessions, you can't pull an I do not recall. It. I wouldn't talk about this in a normal situation, especially being here with you guys. Whoa, I no, thought we were what, I thought really? we were friends. How dare you put the friend card on the line like this, Simmer? But listen to me. It's not about the sex. It's about what happened after the sex. Because you may remember that I said something earlier. And what I said was that I wasn't prepared for this. Which means I didn't bring a condom. So after I went home and we had, you know, everything was great. Uh, I left her at the motel. I don't know what happened to her afterwards. What? <laughs> I had to go. She went to work the next morning and I'm like, are you going to be okay? And, she's, and she said, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll just figure it out. And I'm like, all right, I got to go home. See ya. And I left. You're not the hero I didn't I of this story. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not the hero of this story. So I go home and I, you know, I communicate with her every once in a while since then. Nothing was awkward. We really did have a good time. It just wasn't like anything more than that. Not from what you and described. Hey, hey, we, no, we had a good time. Leaving the sex completely out of it, you drove up to her and then you got her drunk on cheap Nevada liquor and then her boyfriend kicked her out and then you drunk drove her to a motel uh, and then you left. Shh. I go home and I keep talking to her here and there and nothing else really happens. And I see a post from Alicia on Facebook and it says the following. About to have a baby! And I fucking freak the fuck out. She's like, one month left till the baby comes. And I, I start rummaging through my phone calendar to see like, when did I go? When did I go? Was this nine months ago? Fuck. And it was luckily like one month, like one month difference from what it would have been. So that means like a month after I, I did that stuff with her, she had another relationship. So she was pregnant and she had a baby and I freaked out because like, what if this baby's mine? But it wasn't. We're good. We're in the clear. I got lucky, but she didn't because she had the baby. And sadly, after about a year, um, I think the baby passed away of a disease and it was like heartbreaking. To, like see that online because i saw the whole journey i think a little while before that before the baby passed away 
her mom passed away too. So it was just like that one year from the time where I met her, that year had so many tragic, terrible events happen to her. If she's watching this, I'd like to say, I, I guess I'm sorry that uh, college Don't say I guess I'm sorry. No, okay, okay, no okay. I am sorry that college me did not have it's you it's you a better mindset it's not me i'm a new me every every no, day i wake up and absolve me. yourself of your past sins like that yes you do it's called confessions at church and i it's go still... every sunday do you have a problem with religion <laughs>